Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. O Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Most, most merciful Lord and Father eternal, humbly we ask that you would bless and sanctify these vessels which will contain the water and the wine in which we will offer the sacrifice of the Mass. Dear Lord, we ask that it be pleasing unto you to hear our prayers this day. All of this we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. May the peace and the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon these cruets, and may the blessings be for those who will partake of the consecrated wine and water, which becomes for us the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now let us recite together the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord. Amen. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we may enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen.
for the peace of Jerusalem pray. May those who love you prosper. May peace be within your ramparts. Prosperity with your, your towers. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. to the world. 
For neither does circumcision mean anything, nor does uncircumcision, but only a new creation. Peace and mercy be to all who follow the rule and to the Israel of the God of God. From now on, let no man, no one make trouble for me, for I bear the marks of Jesus on my body. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers and sisters. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Lord, my heart is not proud, nor are my eyes haughty. I do not busy myself with great matters, with things too sublime for me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Say to him, Peace be with you, my brother, and with your family, and with all who belong to you. Alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah, with a burning coal cleanse my heart and my lips, through your gracious mercy, that I may willingly proclaim your holy gospel, through Christ our Lord, amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. At that time, the Lord appointed 72 others whom he sent ahead of him in pairs to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Carry no money bag, no sack, no sandals, and greet to no one along the way. In whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this household. If a peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest on him, but if not, it will return to you. Stay in the same house and eat and drink what is offered to you, for the laborer deserves his payment. Do not move about from one house to another. Whatever town you enter, and they welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick in it and say to them, the kingdom of God is at hand for you. Whatever town you enter and they do not receive you, go out into the streets and say, the dust of your town that clings to our feet, even that we shake off against you. Yet to know this, the kingdom of God is at hand. I tell you, it will be more tolerable for Sodom on that day than for that town. The 72 returned rejoicing and said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us because of your name. Jesus said, I have observed Satan fall like lightning from the sky. Behold, I have given you the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and upon the full force of the enemy, and nothing will harm you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice because the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice because your names are written in heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord.
us now and forevermore. Amen. Good morning to all of you. Good morning, Ben. A little better today than it was yesterday. And I'm so happy that we are able to get one of the fans working, the other one not so lucky. But by opening up the windows and the door, uh, we were able to get uh, a little bit of extra uh, breeze come in. And Jesus said to them, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest, words taken from the gospel according to St. Luke. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters, disciples of the Lord, in today's gospel according to Luke, we see that Jesus appointed 72 disciples that were sent out in pairs to every town and place that Jesus intended to visit. You know, there are times discrepancies that are found in Holy Scripture. In some versions of the Holy Bible, such as the New International Bible and the New American Bible, which we read from today, there were 72 disciples who were sent out in pairs. But the King James Bible and the New American Standard Bible states that there were only 70. This discrepancy has never been resolved, but both the numbers 70 and 72 play an important part in understanding Jewish tradition out of which Christianity was formed. The Kabbalah, which is an ancient book based on the mystical interpretations of the Bible in the Jewish faith, teaches that there are 72 angels who inhabit the nine divine choirs and the hierarchy tree of life. Among them are the seraphim, the cherubim, the archangels, and the angels of God. The number 70 also plays an important part in Jewish tradition. The number 70 appears many times in the Torah. Following the, sto the story of the destruction at the Tower of Babel in the Old Testament, there was a separation of people who formed 70 languages and 70 nations of the world. There were 70 elders who assisted Moses in the wilderness following their exodus from Egypt. There were 70 members who formed the Sanhedrin Council. And there were 70 Jewish scholars who translated the Hebrew Bible into Greek in the third century BC, which is known as the Septuagint. But whether 70 or 72, the fact remains is that Jesus sent out his disciples in pairs to help people to receive the good news and that the kingdom of God was at hand. The message of Jesus to the, those he sent out was, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. As disciples of Christ, we are all called upon to go out and to share the good news of Christ. The story today shows that Jesus needed help in the spreading of the gospel. He could not do it alone. And he knew he could not do it with only 12. But just think, 
He entrusted the spreading of the gospel to others, and he places this gospel to be spread and shared in the hands of all disciples today. Each and every single one who has been baptized into the faith in that of the Holy Trinity are called upon by Jesus to go out and to be living witnesses of the living Christ to others. In what we know as the Great Commission, as found in Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20, Jesus gives the directive and the mission of all his disciples. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. We read that the 72 disciples returned to Jesus rejoicing. I am sure that most of those who were sent out by Jesus that day were not educated. I am sure that even some were illiterate. But still the Lord sent them out. Didn't he begin his ministry by calling simple fishermen? This is where the power of the Holy Spirit comes into the picture. Look at the transformation of the apostles following the Pentecost experience. They went from being timid and scared individuals to men who came with conviction, boldness, and the power of the Spirit of God. And the same boldness, conviction, and power of the Holy Spirit radiated in the hearts and minds of the countless men and women who were to suffer martyrdom for the sake of the kingdom of God and the spread of the good news. I believe that one of the keys of true discipleship today in the Lord is found in St. Paul's letter to the Galatians, where he writes, Brothers and sisters, may I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. It is by the cross, my brothers and sisters, that we are reborn and transformed. It is by the cross that we truly seek first the kingdom of God. And it is by that cross, my brothers and sisters, that we are saved. You know, the message of Jesus is just as relevant today as it was 2,000 years ago. The harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. We see in our society and in families the need of that healing power that forgiving power and that loving power of Christ. Did not they say, Lord, even the demons are subject to us because of your name. If we only trust in the Lord as well as those disciples, we will be led by that Spirit of God to those whom the Lord would have us meet let us today search our hearts and minds and answer that call when the Lord says, Come and follow me. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten from the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not me, the one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in the fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Whoever rejects me and does not accept my words has something to judge him. For the word that I spoke, it will condemn him on the last day. and sisters that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of compassion and forgiveness, receive our offering this day and make us one with him 
who is our peace. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. After his glorious ascension, in which to govern, sanctify, redeem, and regenerate the church, to conform it in truth, inflame it in love, and strengthen it in unity, he took his place at the right hand and sent the Holy Spirit. That by the power of the same Holy Spirit, the good news of immortality might resound throughout the world. And so on this day, we join with the voices of the seraphim and cherubim, the archangels and angels, with all the saints and the entire church. And we lift up our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God. and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries 
in which spiritually and bodily, in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again he gave thanks to you, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do these things, do them in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the child's everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive gifts of your servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which our high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice of the Magdalene host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar, into the presence of your divine majesty, that we, who receive the most sacred body and blood of your most beloved Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us your sinful servants who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Numbers in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence,
past, present, and future, and by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, as also Andrew and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, supported by the help of your mercy. May we always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please be seated. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant this who lives and reigns with God the Father, in unity with the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord.
a sacred banquet, memorial of the last supper. God's presence and the Word was God. 
he was present to God in the beginning. Through him all things came into being, and apart from him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found life. Life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by carnal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. Anyway, I welcome you uh, today. Um, blessings be with you. I bring to mind just a couple of announcements because it is a gorgeous day and uh, I want you to all enjoy it. Thursday at 1230, we have um, a choir rehearsal. Um, and so those of you who are sitting in the pews, we could use a couple of extra people. But anyway, I also bring to mind that this coming Friday, I'm going to be traveling to Winsocket, Rhode Island uh, for the sixth annual Eastern Diocesan Camporee, of which I've been a part of for over five years. I will be returning on Saturday. I ask that in the case of any emergency that you please contact Father Senior Joseph Soltishak, since Father Adam Chabonetsky, who is the national chaplain for the scouting program, will also be in Woonsocket. I bring to mind next Sunday, Holy Mass at nine o'clock. And also, I bring to mind that in the afternoon at 3.30, there is going to be Vespers that will be celebrated at the Cathedral of the Pines in Ridge, New Hampshire. This has been done for many, many years. And uh, I bring this to your, your attention, uh, that after the Vespers, there will be a, a barbecue chicken dinner, um, and the price is in the bulletin. I bring to mind also uh, gratefulness, is that I talked to Buddy um, yesterday, and I found that um, the clergy pension fund that um, we collected $490. So I want to thank all of those uh, good people that gave. I also, I talked to Sue yesterday. I wanted to see if there were any uh, further updates. But to date, there was $1,395 that were collected for Karen's Crusaders. And again, I thank all of you who generously gave. Um, Wayne, as, as you know in the beginning, we had New Pruitt's Blessed. 90th anniversary in the back of the church, we have envelopes, uh, uh, sponsorship letters and tickets. Uh, please see Sue. Um, I also bring to mind that um, there are extra posters, uh, as well as sponsorship letters for businesses. So if you can help in any way, it would greatly be appreciated and also an appeal for gift baskets. The time is flying by, and we want to try to um, kind of take care of things that are a little outstanding. And again, there's information on the second annual Shubhden Dorje 
day that will be held here on Saturday, August 24th. Did I forget, forget anything? I made it less than an hour. Mm -hmm. so God's blessings be with all of you and let us offer prayers for not only uh, members of our family, uh, parishioners who are not here today, but for our own special intentions that the God, good God um, would, would bless all of us with health, peace, and prosperity. Um, yes. Yes. I would like to thank the choir for the beautiful gift of song. I have not been here in a while. They sound like there's many more people up there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Buddy? I would like to know if the parish committee could be upstairs here for about five minutes right after mass. Okay. Good. Is there anything else that needs to be announced? Again, God bless. Have a good day and a good week. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And for all the faithful departed, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.